Real quick before I get started, I wanna let y'all know what a crazy last couple weeks it's been. My wife gave birth to our daughter. My shop got broken into. And the slab for a table I was going to build, it ended up needing a couple extra weeks to dry. So that brings us to this project. My friend John Malecki did a shark table carving based off a Scott Down design. So that's what we're gonna do today. And I'm gonna carve a rattlesnake into a tabletop. The only problem is I've never done anything like this. So I guess we're just gonna have to wing it. Being an impromptu project, I wanted to use some scraps and pieces of lumber that I've had laying around the shop for a while, like this walnut cookie slab. Now, this was just an impulse purchase from a slab auction on Instagram, and it's just been sitting around my shop for about a year. Honestly, I couldn't even tell you what sort of walnut it is, but it'll work well for this and for what I'm wanting to do. And the first thing to do is clean up all the bark around the edges. And I'm always a little bit amazed by how many comments I get on Live Edge projects telling me that I should leave the bark on. I'm sorry, folks, but that is a terrible idea. The bark is eventually gonna fall off anyways on its own and bark is rustic and unsightly. I ran a few quick flattening passes on my CNC and this slab is narrow enough I can run it through my planer to flatten the other side. And like I've done with my recent videos, hidden somewhere in the remainder of this video, I've got a little Easter egg for you. So just leave a comment telling me what it is and the timestamp of where you found it. And if you're the first one to do so, I'll send you a free Johnny Builds t-shirt no matter where you are in the world. Before I can even get started doing all the uh, carvings and well, even gluing on the pieces, I have to address all the cracks in the top of the slab. I'm gonna use some Total Boat two to one high performance epoxy and tin it black. If you're doing a lot of epoxy like me, this pump from Total Boat is an awesome investment and it dispenses the perfect amount of epoxy and hardener at the same time. I'll make sure to drop a discount link down below for y'all to use when you're shopping at totalboat.com. And that gives you a discount on all of their products on their website and you can use that as often as you like. So again, I've never done any sort of wood carving, but I've never let the fact that I have no idea what I'm doing stop me from trying a new discipline. So I watched Malecki's video where he made that shark table. I've watched Blake's video from BM Sculptures. That dude is an amazing artist and y'all should definitely check out his stuff if you haven't already. But that's the extent of my education into wood carving. All right, now I need to figure out the layout. So I've decided I'm gonna carve a snake and I'm gonna carve a snake that's gonna look like it's swimming through the water. Originally, I thought I'd do like a water moccasin, otherwise known as a cotton mouth, um, but they just don't look as cool as a rattlesnake. So that's what I wanna do. I'm guessing that uh, at some point in history, a rattlesnake has been in the water and had to swim. I don't think that they uh, typically do. I don't know, I'm just guessing here. I like the layout of the slab this way. It gives me some room to work with. It's a little bit bigger back here, but what I'm thinking, the head kind of coming up and out right here. We'll have that kind of snake around, if you will. And then I'll have it kind of follow this curve over here. I'm using maple for carving, which I think was bad idea number one. In my head, I wanted a harder wood to carve, so that would be more forgiving. But there's a reason why wood carvers tend to use softer woods. And as I found out later on, maple was just really hard to shape, especially when I wanted to do some of the more intricate details. But again, I'm not gonna let this mistake just stop me from powering right through. Uh, all right, hey, uh, so with all the maple milled up, I'm marking out the pieces so I can carve away and rough in some of the shape before gluing it onto that slab and then having to carve away excess material. Now, I didn't do any pre-shaping on the stock for the head because I wanted to make sure that I had an even surface for clamping pressure as I glue on the blanks onto that slab. So while the glue dries, I'm gonna go through my scrap wood pile and find some walnut to build the base from. And I'm going with a fairly simple base design that has four curved legs, and that's all connected to a center post and supports at the top to hold that carved tabletop. I'm gonna build the base later on in the process, but for now, I can go ahead and get those pieces milled up and cut to size so that they're ready whenever I need them. And I wanna say real quick, as always, I really appreciate y'all watching my videos and hitting that subscribe button, which is the best way that you can support what I do. So if you're a fan of the channel and if you wanna see what I'm making next, gently tap the subscribe button. And like always, I really, really appreciate all of you who do that. So before I start carving, I need to get on my computer here and find some reference images that I can use to kind of guide my carving. Again, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I've never done anything like this, especially not as intricate as what I'm gonna need to carve this.
Got a couple uh, reference images that I think we can go in there and start making some drawings and then, uh, yeah, get the carbon. So I don't have to worry about detail too much right now, uh, more just kind of the, the rough layout so I can start cutting this. And what I'm thinking is, this is my reference image right here, and I want the mouth open like that. That looks really awesome. And there's a lot of support material for the fangs. Not that it's not already so obvious that it doesn't need to be said, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I'm not an artist, far from it. Now I can be creative, and I actually think that anyone has the ability to be creative, but artists have innate abilities that rises above mere creativity. Your art was the prettiest art of all the art. So to rough out material on the head and the body, I'm using a reciprocating saw, which makes really rough cuts, but here all I care about is quickly removing material so I don't have to carve away as much. So I've got several air cleaners running right now and they're plugged in around the shop, then that's gonna help me collect all the dust that I'm gonna create. But this meant that I did have a shortage of available outlets, so thankfully I've got this portable power station and this is gonna give me power right where I need it. And I did all of my carving using this power station. So I started with cuts all carving discs to further refine the shape. And you'll also see me using a bunch of cuts all carving burrs later on. And I'll make sure I'll drop links for all those carving tools down below so you guys can check it out for yourselves if you're wanting to do some wood carving. Because what I learned very quickly, power carving is super satisfying, almost therapeutic. Also, it's way less painful than getting tattoos, which lately has been my main form of therapy, but it's really relaxing. And the worst thing you can do is make something ugly and failure is just a stop on the path to success. Or so is getting frustrated and closing the shop up early and going to grab a beer, which happens from time to time, either way. Okay, so I got into SketchUp and took um, this drawing right here and made some really rough vectors. I did it in a couple different sizes, but I think this size right here is going to be perfect. And then I did this for the top profile. And yes, I know it looks like a page of... Um... There are several penises there. I'd love Phyllis to run her eyes over. Anyways, this one is the correct size. So now I can cut these out and then actually uh, draw my outline. And I'm going to use a smaller uh, quarter inch cuts all burr and use my rotary tool and I'm gonna take it really really slow because again I've, I've never done this I don't know what I'm doing so I figure if I just take my time I'm really careful then I can get something that you know my goal is something above a fourth grade level like a win would be eighth grade I'll accept sixth grade there's some really good art in sixth grade Well, that was good for some rough shaping. Um, it looks terrible. It looks like a weird turtle. <laughs> My biggest fear is that I remove too much material and you know, once I remove something, I can't get it back. I've got a good rough shape. I like my outline. I like where I'm going. I think I need to switch over to the finer cuts all burrs using the Dremel. I think I'm just gonna start roughing in the profile, probably, actually probably with this guy right here. I just dropped it. Whoa, God. Oh, God. Okay. I promise. I'm sort of competent. These smaller cuts all burrs allow me to go slower and remove less material and hopefully not screw the whole thing up. Again, you've seen me using the portable power station. And I want to take a quick second here to tell you all about this Jackery power station because frankly, it's awesome. And I really think a lot of you would find it as useful as I do. So as you've seen throughout this video, having portable on-demand power in my shop or outside is very important to what I do. And that's why I'm excited to say that I partner with Jackery, the sponsor of today's video. Throughout the video, you've seen me using the Jackery Explorer 2000 plus portable power station, which gives me access to fast on-demand portable power anywhere in my shop. I really encourage you to check out the Jackery Explorer 2000 Plus Portable Power Station, and there is so much you can do with this. As I've shown you, it's great for portable power anywhere in your shop, but it's also great for going outdoors where power may not be available, or if you're going on site to do some sort of install, you can have that power right there with you. And there has never been a better time to get a Jackery Portable Power Station than there is right now, with Jackery's amazing Prime Day sales lasting now until July. 
July 12th, where you can get up to 44% off. The Jackery Explorer 2000 Plus Portable Power Station is packed with amazing features, including 10 outlets, two hour fast AC charging, a 3000 watt output with a 6000 watt max output. Add in the Jackery Solar Saga solar panels and the expansion battery pack to go completely off grid. Check out Jackery's amazing Prime Days sale lasting now until July 12th, where you can get 44% off. And I've got details on that and a link down below in the description. All right, getting back to the carving and I switch back to the larger burr while I shape on the back of the head and the neck. And I've gotta be really careful here that I don't gouge into the surface of the slab. But unfortunately, I did do that a couple times. Luckily, it was nothing that I couldn't just sand away. At this point, I was feeling pretty confident and I was really enjoying the process. It's really satisfying to watch the material being carved away and to see the shape of the snake starting to emerge. Okay, well, I'm actually uh, really digging the progress of the shape of the head, but I did screw up as I figured that I would. I carved the lower jaw too thin. I mean, it's to the point where I can't save it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sand all of this lower jaw off and then glue on a new block. I'm optimistic that this is gonna work. I'll just be much more careful this time. The top of the head is looking really, really good. It's just really rough. So I'm gonna start sanding and smoothing that out. It's actually a really enjoyable process. This is super, super satisfying to see the snake kind of come out of a block of wood. Even with that big screw up, I still have that early project optimism. And maybe you all know what I'm talking about, but when you're in that design phase or the early build phase and everything seems to be going great, Usually it's even said out loud, which Jeff had just mentioned how good the carving was going. But what I didn't fully appreciate here is that at some point, what I think I thought I knew about wood carving was gonna crash headfirst into the amount of skill that it actually takes to be a wood carving artist like a Scott Dow or a Blake McFarlane. But not to be deterred, I'm powering through, but it is getting increasingly harder to take what I have in my head and then transfer that into the actual wood carving. I threw everything that I had at this process that could possibly help me shape the snake from those cuts all carving burrs to the cuts all discs. I used some chisels, I did some hand sanding, I used this little detail sander, I used my Festool Rotex sander, basically stopping just short of gnawing away the wood with my teeth. So here I've reached a stopping point on carving for the day, but before I leave, I wanna make the jaw piece and glue that in place. So to square up the inside where the jaw gets glued on, I'm using a series of files and this worked great. I just placed a thin shim under the file to keep the edge from gouging out the surface of the slab. And for the jaw, I'm gonna use a leftover chunk of maple, but I had to make sure the grain was running in the same direction as the rest of the headstock. This was the one piece that was glued on with the edge grain and not the face grain. So I had to make sure that matched up. Again, after drawing on the rough shape, I'll refine that further by cutting away as much excess material as I can on the bandsaw, and then I'll start carving that with the rotary tools. And now is a good time to tell y'all about what I was talking about in the beginning, my shop getting broken into. So last week at about 4.30 in the morning, these three punks smashed out my front door and came into my building. But when I watched the surveillance video, I was a little puzzled as to why they ran out so quick. But I go out to my shop later that morning and I run into the maintenance guy that actually lives on site and he filled me in on the rest of the story. Apparently, he was watching these ne'er-do-wells kind of creeping around my shop and peeking in the windows. I mean, he's doing this at 4.30 in the morning in the dark. So when they smashed the glass, he literally ran over there yelling at them and I'm guessing for them the sight of a sleep deprived shirtless grizzly bear physique man running directly at them scared them off and thankfully nothing was stolen so shout out to jack the maintenance man and i was super lucky that i didn't lose anything and all i had to do was get the door fixed so i'm at that point in the project where uh you know things were going well i think the shape of the head uh looked pretty cool um the the little parts of the body coming up out of the water i think look cool but i'm at that point where my lack of skill and my lack of experience doing this i'm running out of ideas as to make this work the way i want it to i tried some uh, carving of snake scales on the back it looked terrible you know again i'm not an artist i don't have a steady hand i'm at that point where maybe i did a good job for kind of roughing everything but i don't think i'm going to get a pro level finish on this now i'm just trying to figure out like how I wanna bring this whole thing home. 
I'm going to do as good of a job as I can to kind of finish this thing out. I think I am going to carve in the eyes and the nostrils. And then my idea is, um, initially I was gonna torch it to give it some texture and a bit of color and to contrast the wood. But I did a test over here and it just doesn't look great. I think I might use some indie ink and kind of paint this on and have like a black rattlesnake. <laughs> I don't know, is that a thing? So like I said, this project just isn't going well. And I think it's safe to say at this point that it's a failure. And totally feel free if you want to jump in the comments right now, let me know how much I suck at wood carving because honestly, you'd be right. I'm not very good at this. However, I have no regrets trying something that's totally out of my skill set and out of my comfort level. And honestly, I sort of hope that's what you all are able to take away from watching this video. I think the majority of the things I make turn out pretty nice. And sometimes, as in the case of the table that I made in the last video, I'm exceptionally proud of how it turned out. But the thing is, to get to that point in my woodworking journey, I had to make a couple ugly tables first. I think that's just part of the process. And I think the lesson here is don't be afraid to fail. As a matter of fact, I think it's extremely difficult to be successful without failing first. And not just once, failing over and over, but then not giving up. And that right there is the secret sauce in my opinion. It's that getting back up after you've had your ass handed to you. And I know this sounds super cliche and it all sounds super cheesy, like I'm giving you some rah-rah speech. And I'm not trying to be some motivational speaker. And if you just buy my course on the seven steps to success, you'll be rich and famous. No, I'm just a 44 year old retired cop. It's got a nose ring and a bunch of tattoos and I've had my fair share of failure. And I think along the way, I've learned the lesson or two. It's not always the case, but basically do shit that that scares you. Do some hard stuff. Fail a couple times and then fail some more. Then go buy my merch and hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Now, naturally, I'm sort of kidding. Well, except for that getting subscribed part. For real, y'all are gonna wanna do that. I've got some awesome projects coming up. But one of my favorite phrases that I've ever heard is progress, not perfection. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this ugly snake table progress. All right, hopping off the old soapbox and let's talk real quick about the table base, which I don't think was a failure. I think it's a nice little walnut table base for this little side table. And I'm gonna assemble the whole thing with domino mortises and glue. For the curved leg glue up, I made some little curved clamping blocks and those match the outside radius of the legs. And that gives me a parallel surface to clamp these in place. My idea here was to use blue tape and super glue to hold these clamping blocks in place, but this didn't work. Thankfully, Jeff had a good solution here, which was just clamping the blocks vertically first to hold them from sliding up and then clamping horizontally to glue the legs to that center column. The next day I got the table base out of the clamps and the whole thing was a bit wobbly, but pro tip, you can quickly sand the high spots down with some sandpaper glued to a scrap piece of plywood. And after just a couple minutes of doing this, the legs were even and there was no more wobble. To spray on the finish, I'm using Total Boat Halcyon and this Rockler HVLP sprayer. Both Rockler and Total Boat are longtime sponsors of this channel, so make sure to check out the description for links to all those products that I use. And as always, when you support my sponsors, you help support what I do, and I really appreciate all of you for that. All right, I'm gonna call this one a wrap, and there is no way around it. This little table sucks. This just stinks. But in a way, I kind of love it, and I'm gonna put this thing in my house, if my wife lets me, if not, I'll have it in the shop, but it's gonna go in my house or my shop as a reminder that it's okay to screw up. It's okay to fail. It's okay to make something ugly, but the trick is to just keep at it. That said, this does look like a third grader made it with their eyes closed. It looks like a bag of smashed assholes. It looks like the perfect example of what not to do when you're wood carving. It looks like what prison food tastes like, probably. Helen Keller would have done a better job. It looks like an untrained chimpanzee built it with her feet. My newborn infant daughter even told me it sucks. I would have to pay a customer to take this off my hand. Abraham Lincoln would rather sit and watch a play than have to look at this table. John F. Kennedy would rather take a Sunday drive through Dallas than have to look at this table. Bruce Springsteen is better at being a musical artist than this table is at being a table. That's how you know it's bad. Okay, I'll see y'all in the next one.